Hi, Lainey. Hi, Al. Lainey Brown and I are here at the Hudson River. This is the Hudson River. We are on the east side of the Hudson River, mid-Hudson they call it, really the central Hudson River Valley. And across the way there is the Catskill Mountains. They're sort of partly covered by clouds and fog. Beautiful. And we're here to talk about a poet, John Ashbery, who has a double relationship with the Hudson. First of all, he, for many years, owned a house in, I believe, Hudson, New York. Mm. Yep. And he lived for many years in Chelsea on the west side of Manhattan, just a few blocks from the Hudson River there. And in 1991, he published a book-length poem, famously, called Flowchart. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a tiny passage. You know, Mod Po doesn't do book-length poems very well because we like to talk about, do close readings. We found a passage that is about the Hudson River. And so we decided, even though it won't convey the whole of flowchart, there's enough flowchartishness in this mm -hmm. to talk about. And it works perfectly well with, with our scenery. this location. So, why don't you read it, then I'll read it, and then we'll talk about it. All right. And the river threaded its way as best it could through sharp obstacles and was sometimes not there and was triumphal for a few moments at the end. I put my youth and middle age into it and what else, whatever happened to be around at a given moment, for that is the best we have. No one can refuse it and by the same token everyone must accept it. And then now I'll read it and we can talk about, I guess we should start with the river, but. And the river threaded its way as best it could through sharp obstacles and was sometimes not there and was triumphal for a few moments at the end. I put my youth and middle age into it. And what else? Whatever happened to be around at a given moment where that is the best we have no one can refuse it, and by the same token, everyone must accept it. There's so much that's mm -hmm. Ashbury in there, and there's so much that's flow chart. So you, bef off air, you commented that this is a very process mm -hmm. passage. Can mm -hmm. you explain what you mean by that? I'm thinking about the, the process of a life reflected in the movement of a river, this notion of continuousness of a life. Right, right. And, in, as a matter of poetics, all of flowchart and even this passage is flowy. Can you point out some flowiness in the passage, the way it's written? Hmm. Well, there's almost no, well, there's a little bit of punctuation, not much. Well, we start with the river moving. Right. And the river threads its way as this poem has threaded its way for right. 100 pages and plus. And it's becoming unimpeded whatever is happening is continuing to flow mm -hmm. from youth into middle age it flows so life flow age flow and then from presence to absence like uh, from being visible to invisible which could have to do with the fog like we're seeing right now it could be fog it could also be just if you've lived near a river a, mm -hmm. a mighty river like this one Mm -hmm. It's always there. It's kind of like living next to the ocean, except it's a little less dramatic, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. The river is just there. Mm -hmm. I put my youth and middle age into it, and what else? Whatever happened to be around. Mm -hmm. So the river becomes a kind of cipher. It becomes a kind mm -hmm. of every person, everything. Mm -hmm. So what else is a classic Ashbarian move for toward flow? Yeah, no and one then can and it. and and by the same token is a is a classic Ashbury flowy rivery thing. What were you saying? I was saying, and just that no one can refuse it is another way that it's continuing yeah. to flow. Like the flow will not be obstructed, yeah. whether or not we're aware of it, whether or not we see it, mm. it's still happening. What do you think he's saying, thematically, substantively, about the river? That it is 
persistent I mean it, it seems anthemic for a life that's going on like we drift in and out of awareness and mm. consciousness yeah yet we're still always making that passage mm. and what is this stuff about refusing and accepting whatever happened to be around I think I take that to be such an Ashbarian thing that mm -hmm. you know he would put whatever bric-a-brac whatever thought whatever thingy thing mm -hmm. that he had nearby, an mm -hmm. actual thing, mm -hmm. puts it in his poem. Whatever happened to be around at a given moment, where that is the best we have. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. What's he mean by that? It's, it's very positive and in inclusive. Like, nothing is to be filtered out. Everything is a part of it. The, mm -hmm. the river, the poetics exclude nothing. And then this phrase, no one can refuse it, is great because so it is the flow the life the, the river. flow the way the mind works right. to put everything in it yeah i mean there's just something so there are two ways to look at a river like this a uh -huh. great grand river one is it is an implacable thing that you've just got to get over or swim across or boat across and there's no way to you can't move it you can't shape it and then the other approach is the ashbury approach which is to think of it as a kind of idea for the way we live or should live or do live things flow everything is associated with it you can't get away from it mm -hmm. and that the best we have is the capacity at any given moment to use or engage or to accept whatever is there right resistance is futile resistance is futile nobody can refuse it by the yeah. same time token everyone must accept it so let's conclude with thoughts, one each, you and me, what it is. So you've got, presumably it's the river, but maybe it's not. Put my youth and middle age into it. Mm -hmm. No one can refuse it. Everyone must accept it. You first. I say it's life. And the funny thing is that you can refuse it and not accept it, but it doesn't amount to anything. Like the refusal goes nowhere. Mm, mm, so it seems mm. like it's a statement of it's, it's an invitation mm. to realize that not accepting the mm. whatever is arising of the thingness that everything mm. around is missing it, is mm. missing the flow. Mm. That's nice. I wish I hadn't promised that I would offer an <laughs> it because I'd love to end on that, but I'm going to go for it. Okay. I think you're right. I think we're right, we've been right in this conversation, but I want to take it a little further. So the, the easiest thing you can say in, with Ashbery mm -hmm. and the way we talk about poems, mm -hmm. all poems are poems about poetry, all poems are meta poems. It is a kind of status of a poem. We were on our way here, we drove past the Joyce Kilmer <laughs> rest stop mm -hmm. in New Jersey, my home state. And we joked about the Joyce Kilmer poem. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. So there you have this opposition set up between life and writing. Mm -hmm. And that's a fairly traditional view that a tree is always going to be more tree-like than a poem. Ashbery didn't really believe that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ashley didn't believe the, Ashbery didn't believe the opposite of that. Here in this poem, he believes that the river is the poem and that the poem is not just river-like, it is the river. And that's what needs to be accepted. That's fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lainey. Thanks.